Hi everyone, I'm Isaiah, and today I'm going to be talking about how you want to use the fill in the blank signatures of the packet. So, all the page numbers I'm going to be referencing today are in the novice packet. One thing you want to keep in mind when you're using these sections is that you're supposed to actually look at the other team's evidence and then write something down based on what you've read in them. So, we're going to go over one way that you can use uh, the fill in the blank sections. So, there's an acronym that we prompt you to use when you're considering what you're going to write down on those spots of the packet. It's called Dr. Mo. And I'll break it down for you real quick. So, Dr. Mo uh, consists of four parts. The D stands for deny, which just means you're going to be saying, no, this argument isn't true because. The R stands for reverse, which is you're going to be saying their argument is the opposite of what they're saying. So, for, for instance, somebody could say, Florida is the best state in the United States. And your reverse of that would be, actually, Florida is the worst state in the United States. So that's what a reverse is. Next is minimize. And I'm going to talk about both minimize and O, which is outweigh, at the same time, because they're very related. This is when you're doing some comparative stuff. So when you're minimizing something, you're saying that the other team's argument isn't a big deal because. When you're outweighing something, you're saying that your argument is a bigger deal because. So you can see how those two are pretty easily related. Uh, a minimize would look like, so if someone, again, to go with the Florida example, says that Florida's the best state, you could be like, actually, it doesn't matter if Florida's the best state, because the United States isn't great. Maybe another country's better, in your opinion. That could be a way to minimize it. For outweigh, you could say, actually, Georgia's the best state, and here's why. So that's your explanation for how uh, Florida being the best state is outweighed by your argument, or why it's not a big deal that Florida's the best state. Cool. So. That's all pretty removed from the packet, though, so we're going to get into how this actually helps you as a debater. So I want you to think about the solvency section uh, of your affirmative. So again, all the page numbers I will be referencing are in the novice packet. So solvency. Solvency is all about how your plan solves the impacts. So the solvency argument this year is that cutting sales to higher risk clients reduces the chance of negative consequences including human rights abuses. That's on page 19. So that's the tag of the evidence. So you want to think about how you can respond to this argument in a couple of different ways. So we're going to jump into the deny first. And remember what I said with deny. Deny is when you're just saying that no, the argument isn't true. So if the solvency argument is that cutting sales to highest risk clients reduces human rights abuses, your argument is simply going to be no. Cutting sales does not, and I'm going to use an arrow with a line through it, uh, reduce human rights violations. So that's your assertion. So I don't know if your coach has talked to you about this yet, but one way that you want to think about arguments when you're writing them is assertion, which is what this is, reasoning, which is a reason to support that assertion, and then evidence, which is something external to back that up. So in this case, with analytic arguments, or arguments that you would use in the fill in the blank section, you're going to be talking about mostly just assertion and reasoning because you don't want to bring in external evidence. However, you can use stuff that's based in your evidence now uh, that you have already read as the evidence component of one of these fill the blank sections. So if it's a line in a piece of evidence, you can cite it for your uh, ARE to support your Dr. Mo. Cool. So that is our assertion that no cutting sales does not decrease human rights violations. Now what's some reasoning that you can think of to back that up? So I have some jotted down here. One thing you can say is that no, these countries already have weapons. So cutting arms sales won't reduce human rights violations because countries already have the weapons that they need to abuse human rights. Another way you could use the deny is that you could say that non-highest risk clients will still be able to abuse human rights so there's no net reduction in human rights violations. Both of those are reasoning based strategies that you can use to answer the solvency part of the affirmative. I know that there's no page in the packet where you're given a fill in the blank section to write down stuff on for solvency. However, you can write this down on your own sheet of paper or your flow, and then you can use that in your speech. So I'm going to keep going through these. So let's talk about reverse. So, hmm. So with the reverse, you'd be saying that cutting arms sales to highest risk clients would actually increase the uh, chance of human rights violations. Why? What's the reason that you can come up to support this? So this is actually a really hard one. So, the convenient thing is that we provided you some evidence to do this with. So, the evidence that we provided you with uh, is on the, the advantage answer page, I think. Um, but it argues that uh, 
The Borshevskaya evidence argues the term that if we cut sales to these countries, then they will just buy from other countries like Russia, which could let them abuse human rights more so because there are fewer regulations. So the reverse would be turn uh, other country or countries buy from Russia. Cool. So those are some deny and reverse strategies that you can use against solvency. We'll talk about some of the other ones. So you can talk about minimize. You can say, well, you want to reduce the, uh, the effect of the other team actually being able to reduce arms sales. So what you can say is, uh, cutting sales might decrease human rights violations, but it won't stop all of them. And all of their impact evidence talks about why all human rights violations are bad. So if they can't stop all human rights violations, then there's no point of the plan. So you can minimize the scope of their solvency with, uh, with M. Um, and I'm not going to drop that one down. And outweigh is a lot harder to use uh, because you have to talk about your impacts. So when, I write, when I'm going to write this outweigh down, it's going to assume that you have already read your manufacturing dissad. So your manufacturing dissad says, in short, that arms sales are good because they preserve uh, American military readiness. So you can make the argument that uh, cutting arms sales may reduce human rights violations. However, the collapse of U.S. military readiness would lead to a net increase, or not lead to a net increase, but is far more important than reducing human rights violations because if we aren't militarily prepared, then how can we prevent other countries from violating human rights in other capacities? So even if they aren't using arms that we buy, or that they buy from us that we sell, they can still be taking other forms of action that we can no longer prevent because we aren't prepared to do so. So that's how you'd want to think about Dr. Mel. And I want to emphasize that D and R are probably the most important parts for responding to solvency, which is why I've written them down for you here. And you can feel free to try to use some of this in your debate rounds yourself. Awesome. So we're going to be doing one more example. But I want to give you all some time to jot some stuff down on your own. So I'm going to tell you what argument we're going to be responding to. And then we're going to pause. And then we're going to come back, and then we're going to talk about that. Awesome. So this, the, uh, the last example I have is all about the manufacturing dissent. And I'm going to rehash that real quick. So the manufacturing dissent says, in short, that the plan reduces arms sales, which hurts the United States manufacturing sector. That's key to American military readiness, which in turn prevents great power war, which essentially means nuclear conflict. So you want to write your response to that down uh, on the blank spot on page 24. So I might jot this down on a separate sheet of paper first, so that way you can get your words in order, or write it with a pencil, and then we can talk about what I might recommend to use uh, in that blank spot. So the way that you want to do this, now that you've already given it a first shot, is that you want to pick a part of the disadvantage to respond to. So let's walk through the different parts first. And I'm not going to give a definition because we have other videos that do that, but we're just going to talk about the different parts of the DA, uh, so that we can pick which part we want to respond to. So the uniqueness component says that manufacturing is on brink but stable. Next is the link, which argues that uh, arm sales are key to manufacturing. Then we have the internal link, which says that arm or that manufacturing is key to readiness. And then we have the impact, which I'm using exclamation point for, and which is something I recommend doing because it's really short, uh, which says that readiness is key to solve great power war. So the way that you want to do this is you want to pick one part of these four to attack, and then use your Dr. Mo to do so. And you would probably want to pick one part of Dr. Mo too, so that way you can provide a compelling reason, and you can talk for a little bit about what your argument is. So let's see, hmm, which one would I pick to respond to? It's a good question. So I think I would probably respond to, actually, I think you have a card that responds to the link. So one thing that you want to do is that you don't want to have your Dr. Mo be a repetition of what the next argument you're about to make is. So you want to make sure that you're picking a part of your Dr. Mo that you know you don't, have, you don't already have a response to. So we're going to talk about, hmm, Let's talk about the internal link. 
The internal link says that manufacturing is critical for American military readiness. So we want to start thinking of some reasons why manufacturing might not be that important. One that I can think of is that the United States already has a massive advantage on all these other countries when it comes to its military spending uh, and military technology. So you could argue that no, actually manufacturing is not key to readiness because the United States already has a substantial military advantage and it would take many years for other countries to catch up. So the United States will still be prepared. That would be a deny. You could try to reverse this. You could say that actually manufacturing hurts military readiness. Now that would be a really hard argument to make and there's no evidence that you really have in the pack to back that up. But that's what a reverse would look like. So it would be pretty difficult to argue, and I'm not sure how I would do it either. Um, so I might stick with the deny here. Uh, you could also do a minimize. So if you wanted to minimize the internal link, you could say, sure, manufacturing is important for military readiness, but it's not that big of a deal because, and then you could provide some reasoning to back that up. That's a prompt. Um, and if you wanted some reasons for potentially why that's true, you could cite, uh, well, we've already done it for the denial, you could cite the uh, United States' massive amount of military spending, or you could cite, prob you could actually probably get away with citing um, the amount of co money corporations are currently investing in military technology, so even if the United States, or even if some companies stop selling arms, uh, or are no longer allowed to, or other companies do produce weapons, and so they would still be able to sell them, uh, even if they lost some of their profit margins, there would still be a massive incentive from just the U.S. government buying these weapons alone that they would probably still try to innovate uh, so it wouldn't be as big of a deal um, for military readiness as a whole. Awesome. So that's uh, some Dr. Mo for that. If you wanted to go with an outway, you could talk about how human rights violations are far more important than the internal link here. So you could say, sure, uh, manufacturing is important for military readiness, but if human rights are being violated across the world, it doesn't really matter if the United States is militarily prepared. And you could provide some points to back that up, or you could just say that to be rhetorically powerful um, and see how that works. So that's how you could respond to the internal link uh, with the fill in the blank section on page 24. I might recommend attacking a different part of the DA. Uh, uniqueness could be another fun thing to attack. Um, so yeah, and you can feel free to use some of those arguments that I made uh, in your packets yourself, or you can try to write something else down. So that's all I have, um, and if you have any questions about how to use uh, the Dr. Mo acronym or the fill-in-the-blank parts of the packet, uh, just shoot us an email and we'll get back to you.